We're here at AUSA 2019 and I'm speaking to Dave Hartzell, President and CEO, Mac Defence. Dave, um, we're standing beside a Mac all-terrain crane. Um, looks quite like the M917A3 platform that Mac are currently under contract to supply to the US Army. Are, are there any similarities between the two base platforms? Uh, sir, there are a lot of similarities uh, between uh, the, the all-terrain crane that we're uh, showing here today at AUSA. Um, it's very similar to the uh, M917A3 dump truck that we had on display here last year at the show. Um, pretty much it's our MAC uh, standard granite commercial chassis. Uh, last year we d adapted that chassis to meet the M917 program, which we were the contract recipient of. Uh, this year we decided to take the same basic chassis design and adapt it to use for this all-terrain crane. Uh, the all-terrain crane is something that we think the Army may be interested in in the, in the coming uh, few years. Uh, so we took advantage of using the commonality of that same basic platform and adapting it for this, this new application. Uh, the commonalities between the two programs, uh, it's the same uh, driveline, uh, so it's the same 440 horsepower uh, Mack Volvo 13-liter uh, engine. Uh, it's the same Allison 4500 uh, trans six-speed transmission. Uh, the drive line is the same. Uh, the axles are the Meritor uh, Protec 50 axles, and it's the Hendrickson Primax suspension. Uh, and so, the, the the underpinnings are absolutely common to to the dump truck. Have you? Does the chassis need any revision to to, to mount the crane, or is it is it absolutely standard? Uh, right now, the cr the crane is actually sitting on the same exact chassis platform that is the M917A3. Um, to optimize it for the crane, uh, we may have to do just some minor extension of the wheelbase uh, to optimize for load, load bearing it and uh, stability, but otherwise it's exactly the same basic chassis. Uh, the frame structure, uh, the cross members, uh, the suspension ratings, the axle ratings are identical to the M917. Uh, and the crane itself, uh, um, accepting that, that it may not actually be what is finally on the platform if the, the pending requirement emerges, um, but could you tell us a little bit about the crane that you've put on it and its, its capability, its capacity, um, and, and is it at the limit of the chassis or, or could you actually put a, a more capable crane on should you wish to? Um, the crane that we put on is, is a crane by a national crane made by Manitowoc. Uh, they're also a, a Pennsylvania-based company, just like Mac Defense is, so we're proud of that to have a, a, a state partner uh, in this program. Uh, the crane is a, it's a 40-ton crane uh, that, that, uh, that they've decided to use for this uh, requirement. Um, the requirement, as we know it, is to be able to lift 25,000 pounds at a 24-foot radius uh, around the crane. So this crane is rated to be able to do that. Uh, so that would be the, essentially the load capacity of the crane. Uh, the crane, it, it's a four-section extendable boom type crane. Uh, it extends from 31 feet to 103 feet, giving an effective uh, lift range of 100 uh, feet. Uh, but basically the requirement is, is that 25,000 pounds at 24 feet. Uh, the outriggers that are self-contained on the crane platform uh, also extend out to 24 feet. So the Army requires that you have to operate outside of the outriggers, and that's where the load uh, capacity rating comes from. Uh, the crane is designed, it has uh, ground level uh, abilities to, for setup, but they're also uh, able to adjust the crane and operate the crane from the cab, obviously. Um, the crane also has active safety features, and it has uh, active load sensing, uh, so meaning if, if it exceeds the load ratings that are programmed into the system, the crane will actually provide warnings to the operator and actually will do an active shutdown, so it will not allow them to overlift and, and put anything in, in harm's way. Um, the system also has the ability to be programmed uh, for near object detection, uh, so anything in the workspace, if there's overhead power lines or something, uh, another structure that they would not want to hit, uh, the operator can actually program those parameters into the crane and the crane will automatically prevent it from operating into those locations. Again, uh, just testifying to the safety uh, of the crane system that we put on board. Uh, and you actually mentioned operator safety. Expanding on that, this particular platform's got an armoured cab. Uh, I'm assuming that's the armoured cab that's currently fitted to the dump truck. Would that be correct? Yes. The the M917A3 is, is available both in a non-armored version, which is our standard commercial cab for our granite platform. Uh, then the Army also had a requirement for the 917 for, for 
uh, force protection system for the occupants. This cab is that same cab, so it is designed to meet the same level of requirement as the M917 program. Um, we expect that the crane uh, system platform will also have similar requirements. So fortunately, again, the versatility of, of our granite platform and the 917, we're able to utilize that same basic design uh, to meet the requirements that we anticipate for the all-terrain crane. And on the subject of the M917A3 requirement, how far along are you with deliveries related to that? Uh, the program is going very well for us. Uh, ordering year one uh, contract was for the first five uh, performance verification test vehicles. Uh, we have delivered all of those vehicles uh, per con contractual uh, delivery dates. Uh, four of those vehicles are currently on test at Aberdeen Proving Grounds uh, by the U.S. Army. Uh, they're going through all of the vehicle performance testing and they're uh, ready to start the ram testing as well. Uh, so, so far it's going very well. Uh, the fifth truck is actually at our IPS system supplier uh, working on all of the aftermarket uh, requirements for the operator's manuals and service manuals. Um, we also received the ordering year two contract uh, this past year, uh, which it requires us to deliver the next six vehicles, which will have the armored uh, cabs on them. Uh, the first five were unarmored. Uh, so the next six will be armored. Um, and we also are delivering a ballistic test cab as well, which all will go to Aberdeen Proving Grounds, again, for uh, ballistics and force projection uh, or force protection uh, testing uh, in 2020. So we are on target to deliver those vehicles in the early part of next year, and the Army's on target at this point to uh, do all the testing uh, next year as well. And looking further beyond, the, the, the U.S. Army has a, has a couple of emerging programs that may be of interest to, to MAC Defense, uh, EHETs, METs, and possibly even a little bit further out, maybe the, the replacement of things like PLS and, and HEMET, uh, you know, the family of heavy tactical vehicles. Um, are you, as a company, looking towards those? Um, and if you are, is there, is there anything that you are doing with reference to those that, that you're happy to share? Yeah, of course. Uh, obviously, we're, we're staying connected very closely to the program offices uh, within the Army. Um, the programs such as the upcoming line hall potential replacement uh, and the METS program, uh, we feel we have um, a very good commercial-based platform that we can use and adapt, similar to what we did for the M917 program. We feel we can do the same type of uh, uh, development work and provide the Army a very good value proposition for uh, those programs as well, using our commercial-based uh, offerings. Um, the EHET program, uh, we've been tracking that very closely. The Army's kind of been uh, on again, off again with that program. Uh, currently, the heavy equipment transporter programs, uh, the interim solution that the Army's chosen uh, is to do a refurbishment on the uh, M1070 platform uh, and, and go with a new trailer design to meet the 90-ton trailer payload requirement that they're looking for. Um, so at this point, uh, they're not looking for a new tractor application. Um, but moving beyond that point, when they look, still looking for the enhanced uh, heavy equipment transporter, uh, MAC Defense is very interested in that program, obviously. Um, similar to our M917 program, uh, we feel we can take a commercial-based platform uh, and relatively easily adapt it to meet uh, the requirements uh, for an EHET-type program in the future. Um, the payload, uh, the per mission profiles, and so forth, we feel uh, we can give the, the Army a very good, adaptable commercial base uh, at a very competitive price and, and value proposition uh, for those types of programs in the future. And further out to things like PLS and Hemet, which have traditionally been what one would refer to as a tactical truck, do you think the Mac product could be customized to meet a, a potential tactical requirement to replace PLS and Hemet, or might it be a case of watch this space, see where we go? Yeah. Um, for the Hemet uh, PLS type programs, uh, we're starting to track that uh, closely as well. Um, a lot of what will determine uh, our interest in moving forward in that program is number one is what the ultimate mission profile will be uh, by the Army, uh, the off-road mobility requirements and so on. Um, if the requirements are such that we feel our uh, platforms can be relatively easy adapted, obviously we will be very interested in, in pursuing those types of uh, programs as well. Um, and also obviously it will depend on what the Army's ultimate decision will be in terms of um, what the number of vehicles and so forth that they're interested in pursuing or if they want to do a combination of recapitalization and, and purchasing new. So, so a little bit of the business case evaluation on that. 
but it is something, again, that, uh, again, depending what the final decisions are on specification requirements and mission profile, uh, we feel we can take a, a, a truck uh, similar to the 917 platform. Um, our commercial granite platform is used in a, in a number of um, and variety of different applications, uh, a lot of off-road construction type applications. So, so we think, again, uh, that we can get very close or, or exceed some of the application requirements that they would have for such a, a program for a replacement of the Hemet and the PLS systems out there. Mm -hmm.